Welcome, everybody. I would like to welcome you for the next uh, webinar organized uh, by SIP. Uh, my name is Magdalena, and I'm a in, uh, project manager in, for international projects. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, SIP uh, is a digital association of IT companies from Berlin and Brandenburg. And we are also stimulating cooperation uh, in frame of our Deep Tech Hub project with Poland and Russia. And today webinar, which which we uh, just about to start, is organized in frame of this project. I would like to welcome you uh, very warmly, and um, I will start maybe with some technical tips for our today webinar. Um, if you have any technical problems, please write in the chat. You can see it on the right side of uh, of this uh, screen. Uh, there is also a Q&A session where you can ask your questions. Uh, other participants are also welcome to vote for the most popular question. So you can just vote for the question if you have such for us, uh, our speakers. Uh, first part of the webinar will be presentation from our free speakers, great best studies, uh, good examples of companies who uh, boost their solutions, especially now in this pandemic time, uh, and they will present it to you. Uh, after each of the presentation, we'll have five minutes for questions and answer. So as mentioned before, you can uh, post them in Q&A session. We try to address the most popular ones. After the first part of this webinar, we will move to a, a networking session where I will allow us to go to these tables, virtual tables. Uh, there will be three tables with the names of our speakers' companies where you can join them. And if you have more questions and would like to get in touch with them, you are welcome to join them. Or you can just network and get to know other participants of today's webinar. And uh, as mentioned, we will uh, we have uh, today companies from Berlin, Brandenburg, and from Poland, and we will try today discuss uh, and is really pandemic more uh, stimulating, boosting evolution, or it's already revolution for virtual reality industry. And now I would like to present our first speaker and invite for the stage NetBase. Uh, technology uh, company with uh, Jonas. Jonas, are you with us on the stage? Can you join me? I know that Jonas was already here. Yeah, you can see it. Hello, Jonas, we can't hear you yet. Oh, hello. You can hear me. Yeah, now it's very good. Yes, thank you. Thank you, York, very okay. much, sir. Perfect. Yes. Thank I will thanks for inviting me. Yes, thank you for having time also to joining us and I will leave this uh, the stage for you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jörg. I'm the CEO and one of those founders of Nextbase Technology. And uh, we are Potsdam and Berlin based. And today we are presenting our new broadcasting solution live from our pitch arena in uh, Babelsberg. Uh, let's go ahead. Here it is. Okay, so we, we do have a tiny agenda. It's not going to bore you. So it's just a tiny little bit of the company. Of course, we will discuss, is that really a problem? And we will show our solution. So we will show our SaaS platform, a tiny little bit of user interface of our smart glasses. We will present our bundle. And this is the main part. It's not me, it's Alex. He will present uh, some some live sessions. So let's go ahead and start with uh, with the first slide. It's really like like that. We are in Potsdam for five years now. We are really one of those dinosaurs uh, doing augmented reality stuff for many years and. Uh, Having had some big success, of course, and of course, as a typical startup, we've won a lot of awards. Um, the main thing, it's really like Brandenburg Innovation Award and Berlin Brandenburg Innovation Award. We had been awarded. We won this innovation of uh, aviation with, with Airbus, had been part of different accelerators. And uh, this is good, and this is good enough just to show who you who, are, who we are. And uh, that's the problem. That's really the, the problem. And we don't care if it's 
becoming more and more complex in branches uh, with, uh, which are doing log logistic or um, at the end of the day, it's really like this. Things are becoming more and more complex and uh, the educated stuff is becoming uh, really less. So at the end of the day, it needs to be documented, it needs to be instructed, and it ain't easy because those informations are normally just paper-based. So we do have a solution to get rid of that paper-based uh, in instruction and documentation and uh, do it like that. We, and this is what we really did. We, we started with uh, MRN, diesel and turbines in uh, 2018, um, just doing some logistic stuff connected to the SAP. In the very beginning, it started with two different terminals. One terminal at that solution had been just good to, to uh, do some action at the SAP, and the other terminal had been good for just controlling that big lean lift you will see on the left side. This, this is a nine meter uh, high kind of paternoster, kind of wardrobe. It's really working with shelves and bins and it needs to be controlled with two different terminals. We get totally rid of that. And uh, what we are doing, we are just controlling the lean lift and the logistic procedures, the supply chain doing inbound, outbound, move and count, just did it by glass. And at uh, what, what we did, normally one of these lean lifts will be uh, controlled by one person and we are able to control two by one. So it's really efficient. The, the other one, you see that guy uh, under the green patch. This is an Airbus solution we did one year later. It's connected to the SAP as well, but just by, by, by the way, we are able to connect it to any pre-enterprise resource planning system. We really don't care if it's SAP, if it's Oracle or whatever. This solution, it's a checklist. It's, we are working with uh, Airbus and uh, it's all about that door surrounding and it's a visual inspection, it's a final inspection. And uh, this needs to be done in person, not with laser or whatever. This is just the final. Um, the final in inspection, it's 255 points. And in the very beginning, they started to do it paper-based. Paper-based means, or meant, um, four to five hours, just one door surrounding to check it. Now it's an end-to-end -end -to -end solution. We extract those data out of the SAP. We restructure it and bring it on that glass. On that glass, you will be able to do that checklist step by step. This is connected to different Bluetooth devices and uh, we are going to integrate it. And at the end of the day, there will be a feedback round back to the SAP. Um, so it's just one and a half up to two hours. Uh, in the left down corner, you will see, this is just a Pfizer screen. Uh, we did that within the pandemic. Um, Pfizer, they already wear any kind of masks. They are totally masks. And what we did, we uh, connected our system and did some instruction to clean up their production system. This is really needed and uh, it needs to be perfectly documented. And uh, we integrated that system within, I guess, it had been just three, three months, totally with every kind with, with, with any kind of, of workshops and documentation and presenting it and uh, now they're really working with it on the right side this is one of the biggest companies we already work for this is gazak they are one of these isu they're taking care about gas and electricity and uh, this is our actual product we finished it uh, two weeks ago i guess and uh, alex my colleague and our delivery manager, he will show you later how it's working. So this is our solution. This is our product. Okay, what you see over here, it's on the left side, you will see our next, next gate. Next gate is just a connector to any enterprise resource planning system or just uh, uploading Excel sheets. 
so it's really an end-to-end -end solution. Our customers are giving out are giving us their data and we will structure it, bring it on premise in their own system, all rugged, modular, mobile, with our specially made suitcase. From that suitcase, we will work with that smart glass. There will be a dashboard to, re to generate reports. There will be a possibility to integrate artificial intelligence and give some statements. And of course, you can share this information to, to any other guy. It's just a kind of um, documentation. We don't care if it's just a warehouse solution, if it's a checklist, if it's a step-by-step -step instruction or whatever. For us, it's really mostly the same. It's just data and we need to bring it on that glass and control it by voice. Actually, we are able to uh, talk to that glass and give some commands in uh, German, English, Russian and Mandarin. Mandarin because we sold one of our solutions to that to one of those uh, Shanghai partners of, of Hanel and they are really working with it, totally voice control and in, in Mandarin. So this is our platform, it's really an end-to-end -end solution and uh, if you have a look at that one, this is our enabler. This is, an, this is a product for low-hanging fruits. It's a bundle of hard and software we did this in a research and development project uh, with the German University. We finished that project last month, so this is really available. We did one uh, pre-series A, and uh, what you see over here, it's a suitcase. It's a really rugged suitcase. It's available with uh, Realvia HMT1, an industrial uh, usable smart glass, and the Microsoft HoloLens 2. Um, it's really, really rugged. It's waterproofed. It will last for about 12 hours with big batteries and it's really a high-tech working bench. So using this um, and connect it to our solution will bring you um, really that glass into work in nearly any place of the world. We don't care if it's in the basement, if it's in the submarine. It's really working all over. It's building its own Wi-Fi access point. It's connected. If it's an option, uh, it's connected to uh, with LTE or it's connected with 5G or this is what we last did, it's connected by satellite. So this will be the solution Alex will show you. It's really like that, just it's really viable. We are producing the first uh, Series A and uh, it will bring you the possibility to start your own project within a day. So if we are talking about projects, um, we would love to show you this, uh, this solution we've done uh, for Technisches Hilfswerk. What you see over there, that black thing, Alex will show you later. This is one of these arms from that uh, smart glass, from the industrial smart glass. And imagine it's really in front of your eyes, but you will see it as it is a seven inch, uh, seven inch screen, seven inch screen with an arm length of width. So this is what we love to show you. Uh, if we have a look at technical Hilfswerk, these are all those user screens we are using for that application. It's generic, so if something is changing in front of their enterprise resource planning system, it will change as well as that screens. Um, yeah, it will change as well as that screens. It's really good viewable. It will give you an overview. We are able to show uh, short content, long content, uh, text messages, uh, videos, pictures, uh, documentation, PDFs, whatever. We are able to zoom into the pictures. And uh, of course, our platform is able to extract all those information and give it back to the uh, predefined uh, enterprise. So yeah, now, it's up to us to change the screen and to show Alex. Who is Alex? And he will present you uh, our solution live. Um, as you have told, um, this is the HMT1 from Uriel, the smart glass that we are mostly using in industrial environments. It's a head mounted tablet, um, has three microphones for voice recognition and noise cancelling. Uh, it comes um, in 
part of our suit case called Q, uh, which um, this environment, so it's working standalone. And I now will show you uh, the, the use case of the gaslight. Yeah, to make it more clean, what you see over here is really a live stream. We're really streaming this user interface over here. So if he's viewing commands, you will see it's really working. Um, the orders are now loaded onto the smart glass from the SAP system. At the start of the day, they will load all orders for one worker on a smart glass so they can work with it. And after that day, they can upload it again. That's done because we have, of course, internet uh, connection problems in the rural area around Berlin and um, sometimes also in Berlin. So it's not a good idea to do it real time on the system because you can have no internet connection and then we have a big problem. So it's a hybrid application uh, with offline functionality. Aufträge bearbeiten. It's totally voice controlled. So every um, button you see on the screen is act by voice. It's now a list of uh, downloaded orders for, for my daily play. Um, for example, I can select all of that because this is now what I'm facing at my workplace. Info 5. I can yeah, get shown all the information about, about this order. Should so it. Ausbau 5. And then I get um, into the process. So I have to check some, some gas line um, stuff. I have to open it, I have to check if it's the right one, if it's um, usable, it's a critical infrastructure thing. So, um, of course, you have to close one gas line if there's an emergency. And so they have to test every point of, of closing the valve um, yeah, each year. So, yeah, step by step um, through the process. Nine. Yeah. And step by step, I can document what I have done and get instructed what I have to do. The red marked buttons are buttons with the following process. So, where is the side process of the main process? Um, where I have to document something what's not um, normally there. I have to add some information that I don't know in the system. Yeah, I have to change some information that's changed in the real, the real world and now that could be changed in the SAP. So, that's like the red buttons. Yeah. And so I can get step by step through this process, get instructed, can get information. And yeah, I'm hands free, so I can really work on these gas pipelines. And yeah, have my tools in, in my hands and don't uh, yeah, have to care about a tablet or a sheet of paper that I have to put away and take again. Of course, we are able to scan QR codes, we are able to recognize different plates mm -hmm. and uh, of course, we are able to connect it to different uh, Bluetooth de devices. And we yeah. can take pictures, can zoom in it, and uh, yeah. do videos and analyze that videos, oh, pictures, uh, corresponding to our solution back on our platform. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like the process I go step by step. For example, here I have to make a picture of the environment if I have to clean some plants of the way. So make a picture before and after the cleaning so we can see that um, yeah, it's done properly. Yeah. So that's like all the steps get kind of step by step done. And after this, we get a conclusion and it gets sent to the SAP to process all my um, all the documentation. Yeah. Uh, that's really our solution. Any questions? Because this is the end of our presentation. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much for this interactive presentation. You're welcome. Thanks to the question and answer session, I don't see now any questions from the participants, but maybe I will ask you related to our topic, uh, does the last year and the situation with pandemic influence your, your business and could you see some changes because of the pandemic and the lockdowns all over? Did it boost your company? Yeah, it really boosted our company. Uh, at the end of 2020, we had been six full 
paid full working guys. Nowadays we are 12. So okay. we're going, we, we really going up. And uh, this is a good thing because we are not a typical startup. Of course, we are in the middle of a big funding round, like every other startup in Berlin and one work as, as well. But we do have customers, we do have a perfect solution, and it's, uh, it's available. You can really buy it, and this brings our benefits. And if you ask me for the pandemic, we do have the expression that uh, the pandemic shows how necessary it is to, uh, to digitize your processes. And it's much easier to send one of our suitcases of yeah. just a smart glass to Italy and uh, not flying just around. Huh? Mm, yes, yeah. it's great to see that at least some businesses are, uh, let's say, using the the the, the uh, last year uh, for the benefit. We have one new question: Does the solution work offline, or is it all, uh, or is it does it need constant yeah. internet connection? It, it's really a hybrid solution. It needs to be online just to load up that order. So this can be done in the office or whatever. Or all orders are part of the suitcases. So it's really an offline so solution. Just need to be connected to load up uh, that, that that orders or to, to, to structure your step-by-step -step instruction or set up a warehouse management solution. It's totally offline. Thank God it's offline. <laughs> Yeah, so it's very independent. Thank you very much for the presentation. As Thank mentioned before, pleasure. we will prepare one table for uh, next base technologies yeah. in the networking session. So if the participants have more questions, you're welcome to visit the table and ask more questions. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. And we will now go to the second example from Poland. I would like to invite for the stage Katarzyna Furmaniak and Łukasz Lipka from uh, SmartDA. Katarzyna is already here. Łukasz, are we with us? Yes, I will see already. Yes. I would like to welcome you. And uh, now we will talk about a bit different usage of the virtual reality. Yeah, the, the, the floor is yours. Hello. Um, so um, I'm Katarzyna Fumajak and I'm CEO of SmartDA. Uh, hi, my name is Łukasz Lipka and I am CTO of SmartDA. And today we would like to present you um, some uh, case study of using virtual reality um, solution in industry. So, presentation. Since last year, um, since March last year, as you know, um, our life, business, and uh, education shifted online so um but we see that uh, industry and global economy did not stop but some projects need to be continue and need to be delivered on time that's why uh, we see that market of virtual reality and augmented reality is uh, rapidly growing uh, allowing the industry continuity of operation and processes a uh, picture we want to fact and figure. Uh, you can see this since uh, 2020, the market VRR solution rapidly growing. And the expectation are that up to 2025, the numbers, uh, the, the um, number, um, the market will be about two, uh, 2000, uh, 2025, um, about 30, sorry, about 38 billion dollar by to 2025. So we see there is still plenty to do, and uh, therefore um, we want to show you some of examples. Pandemic accelerates uh, industrial uh, industrial use to secure seamless flow processes. Uh, so every aspect of the industry adapts to the new reality of the production under the virus. So let's see how uh, thanks our VL platform, international manufacturer of heavy machinery FAMOR is able to further develop the business. Okay, uh, on the movie, you can see how uh, this company use VR at the beginning as a just simple tool for presentation of the uh, big machinery and the processes to their clients. At the beginning, it was quite easy tool. We can say that is some kind of virtual catalog that includes 
image, uh, movies, uh, PDF documentation, and uh, a lot of 3D detailed models uh, that have inside all the procedures, how, uh, how all the working together. Uh, as COVID appears, it turns uh, naturally that the tool can change automatically uh, from the presentation tool to a teaching platform. So as you can see on the screen, using your hands, first first approach was you, you have this, this like, like a marketing tool and selling tool, but with all the necessary information included in one uh, place. Okay. Let's go further. Now we would like to uh, present you some kind of a case study based on uh, virtual training, uh, also using by company uh, from from industry. Due to we work with many um, different manufacturers, we see how important it is uh, for industry. Uh, to secure uh, continuity and optimization uh, of processes and also a retraining of employees. This, uh, to do this, it's necessary to uh, uh, use some kind of uh, VR solution. Our VR platform allows in a completely safe space to present all possible treats and ways to avoid them and also methods of conducting uh, of correct behavior. Let's see next movie. Okay, as you can see on these images, there is a step-by-step -step explosion. So on the movie, you can see just 15 seconds of the explosion of the methane. And as you can see, there is a lot of details. So thanks to virtual, virtual reality simulation, it's possible to practice the proper behavior inside. You can see all the details, what happened, wh why the situation happened at the beginning, and a bit more about the platform. The global economy is struggling with the uh, continuity of processes and lack of well-qualified employees, uh, which is why the air, air solution became uh, more and more popular. Okay. Our solution to the pandemic and the educational problem is Bell VR platform. This Bell VR is a virtual reality and augmented reality platform for new reality education and training. It's a place where you can transfer all your knowledge to your employee, conduct action or services in a place where they can learn uh, in a safe and a controlled condition everything they need in their daily work. So Bell VR guarantee easy, accessible, and security, and an interactive training or learning process. Ensure engagement and allows for continuity of operations and processes in many industries. Uh, in the Bell VR platform consists of three main elements. There is VR and augmented reality application for teachers and students to exchange their knowledge like on the, new, on the university. Also, we have a web platform to make uh, all the appointments and the third part is the interactive application to check the acquired knowledge during the course. So, Kasia, please start the movie. Let's start with another. Okay. Uh, and the movie explains step by step the procedures that see the teacher and uh, his student. First, we see all available procedures. Uh, overview of the teacher application right now we have we can see full animated procedures, free camera movement, and overview of what the students are seeing in the real time on the right, on the right, right side. Uh, we have also detailed 3D models with all necessary details. Everything that we need for the changing given part is uh, step by step to the user. And now, you can also see on uh, the overview, uh, here, here are the 3D model, very detailed with all necessary parts. And now we are switching to the uh, students, the student in the Google. 
he's seeing all the machine and all the uh, teacher presentation, and he can ask the question by pointing the mark uh, in the place where he's not understanding the topic. And also, also he can teleport around the machine. And now we see the teacher application with exactly the questions uh, from the students, and also the student can co connect with the teacher via voice over IP. So he hears it quite well. One thing that is missing here is the interactive part when the user have to, by using the manipulators, uh, uh, repeat the procedures that was explained to him by the teacher. Okay. And now shortly about benefits, the most important is safety. Um, thanks to uh, transferring training to virtual reality, it's possible to avoid uh, many dangerous situations. Um, of course, uh, it's also important uh, that due to our platform, um, you can uh, minimize worker mistakes and at the same time increase uh, of competences uh, of workers, uh, students and, and other. Um, BL platform allows for interactive communication. So you can do training in a fast engagement way. Uh, you can also and uh, Belvier enable also for remote assistant or even service. So it's possible to using, um, for example, Holens or, or other goggles uh, and um, to do remotely service. Uh, saving and mobility because you can do uh, training in any place without uh, the need for uh, access to the device or. or which, which will be pre um, presented. And of course, what's also important is a repeatable uh, sim simulation. So you, uh, the student um, is, um, you know, you can repeat the um, situation like in virtual world um, and learn as long as is uh, needed. And the last one is also saving uh, money because Belvier is like your own uh, platform. You can adapt it to your company needs. How it's looking practice uh, shortly. So first we do free consultation. We identify the company needs and of course recommend the best, um, the best project adaptation. Next step is analysis and data collection. Uh, then we go to the step of uh, adapting the platform. So in this step, we uh, collaborate direct with the company. Next step is test. And of course, on the end, is implementation and maintain. So this on this step, you can uh, join, uh, you enjoy your platform and as it, it will be start work, Belvier start works for your benefits. Uh, pandemia also uh, um, the natural process of adaptation of VR our solution not only in industry as you um, could see but also in other uh, branches uh, now we want to show you some example of properties so let's see Lukasz, we can't hear you. <laughs> I'm heavy rain, but I hope you'll hear me properly. So let's see how this uh, virtual reality solution can help to develop the real estate business. Uh, Kasia, please stop for, for, for a few seconds. Yeah, sure. And uh, the investment itself was developed in a great detail by our graphic designers from the architectural, mod architectural model provided by the architect. Uh, and both of us, the client, uh, and we wanted the buildings to look really good. To achieve this, our graphic designer spent uh, several dozens of hours refining the smallest details like light, texture, and elements of environment. Uh, then on the model prepared in that way, uh, we developed uh, the functionality. And now please start the movie. And 
As you can see on the movie, there are some uh, such of following functionality like view of individual floors with the option to choosing the location of the apartment. And you can see also the view of apartment into option one is arrangement and one uh, plans. Here on the right side, you see a set of several filters, uh, including choice of, cho cho choice of the floor, word site, area, price, and number of rooms. There is also an apartment. Button. Also, there's an options for suggestion of similar, uh, similar apartment in, uh, in the estate. Okay, you have choose one of the uh, apartment that you can add it to comparison. And now you see two different apartments that you can compare. There is an arrangement and plan, and this is, and now you can see what is around the, the building or the environment, the closest school, hospitals, and everything you need to know about your new apartment. And this uh, application has also a future, very, uh, very useful future to the sellers, such as synchronization with the sales system. So we have uh, real time updating of the individual apartment. So we know which one you can buy. That's all. Okay. So on the end, uh, we would like to answer the question from the beginning. From our perspective and experience, we see that uh, virtual reality and augmented reality became natural evolution and is very needed for uh, industry and other branches. And we want to thank you for your attention in case of any questions, please. We are waiting for it. Uh, Kasia and Vukas, thank you very much for this presentation. I see that we have some questions. We could see already a few examples of the usage of your platform. One of the questions is in which sectors is, uh, is mostly used your platform? So you showed already a few examples. Are there any other sectors? Currently, uh, mostly they are using in the heavy machines in industry, everywhere where are very complicated machines and their procedures are very dangerous. Or when you have to move the machines, for example, to the training center, because such a cloning or underground machine is very expensive. And if you want to make a practice, so you need to produce at least two machines. Cost of one machine is around one million euro, the cheapest one. So you have to you have to invest one machine to the production and one to so mostly for the heavy industry. Mm -hmm. uh I was wondering when you showed the training where the student uh, is learning how to use the machine, do the teacher and student are online at the same time? It's simultaneous uh, coaching session or learning session? Yeah, there are two approaches. Mm -hmm. One is when you are doing the session in the same time. So you are waiting for the teacher. He's starting the procedures, the animations. He's explaining you everything like we are now talking on this uh, Remo platform. And then this is a finish of the lesson and the students have to make uh, the test if he uh, have uh, understand the, all the procedure correctly. And then he have the Googles on his head with the manipulator, manipulators on his hand and have to uh, once again make all the procedures. Great. And we'll take one more question. Uh, what is the average amount of time from accepting a project to implementing it on your platform? Uh, this is a very good question. In normal way, it takes around from around three three months because uh, the real work starts after mostly two months when we gather all the information because we need all the photos, all the uh, movies, all the procedures that we can transfer to to this our to our platform. And this is the most uh, this take the most of time uh, for mm -hmm. the client to gather all the information. Okay. So Thank I you. would add Sorry. only that it depends also on the cooperation and how big company is. Because 
uh, there is if there is more and more procedure at, at company and uh, machinery is more complicated of course the time it's longer yeah everything but but we estimate it maximum about uh, three months i think thank thank you very much for all the participants who have more questions i will advise you to the networking session and there'll be a special table where uh Ukash and katarzyna can answer most of your more your questions thank you very much uh, now i will invite our last speaker uh sonny kirchhoff i hope you are with us with uh, he's a ceo of universe space uh company sonic are you with us Mm -hmm. Sonke, can you please um, turn on your camera and microphone, then we can see you for your presentation. We were checking. Hmm? Sonke, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Unfortunately, it's our last speaker, so we have no option to change the <laughs> the order. <laughs> I can see that Sonka is present. Oh yeah. I, oh no, it's now it's okay. <laughs> no, I can maybe I can answer the question. There are still some questions. On yes, the right please. Side. Yes, so please. And uh, I wrote. Yes, I wrote. Yeah. Uh, there's a question on which markets are you presented? Uh, is it only Polish, or you have other question, uh, other markets no, as well? No. Currently, we are present. We are present in the uh, not only in uh, Polish, but on, also in U United Kingdom, and we try to f uh, finish one project on the in Dangerland. So we are not uh, limited to any to any global place. The the platform can be in any language you want. Uh, so, uh, what is our <laughs> business? One? Okay, ah, so I can answer it later. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Sanka. Nice to see you. Yeah, you are muted. I was a bit. I was afraid that you were lost, but <laughs> in virtual reality. But I'm happy to see you here. And please, now the scene is your. Please, I. Thanks. I'll leave you for your presentation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm, my browser crashed exactly in the moment when you switched my video on, I think. so. Uh, but it seems to work now. So um, yeah, I assume I missed the introduction words. Um, so my name is Zulke Kirchhoff. I'm the CEO of NBR Space. We are a Berlin-based VR studio. We have a branch in Munich and one in Hamburg, smaller ones, but mainly our headquarters are in, in Berlin. Um, we are working in the field of VR under this umbrella of VR space in seven years. So we didn't ever consider ourselves a startup, but we, if we would have done that, we are out of the age of being a startup. Um, so, um, we dived into this field, um, coming from, um, a filmmaker's perspective. So we start with 360 video already about, I don't know, 10 years ago when we started working with 360 cameras for dome projections and these kind of things. And um, emerged more and more into the field of immersive media, VR, AR, and so on. <clears throat> Saying that we do not focus on specific products or formats or genres. We are dealing with this medium or the different mediums of XR, AR, VR, and so on. Um, that can cover video works, 360 video, for example, documentaries, narrative pieces, uh, marketing uh, projects, commercials that we worked on a lot, for example, in the automotive industry in the last years, um, or um, I'm talking about the automotive industry as well, uh, car configuration tools, for example. So these kind of things are part of our portfolio. But uh, as is it, it is um, a very new medium, all these devices are new mediums and um, should be considered in our eyes as a new medium and nothing where you can just copy paste something that you know from cinema, TV, consoles um, when we talk about gamings and so on we try to to understand this new medium in a new way and create stuff that is really just working on vr headsets or as one delivery that is only working on vr or ar headsets 
And to do so, we are highly engaged in the field of research and development as well. Um, so we work with different in different projects with different partners in uh, consortiums um, to research technology um, that is useful, but not only for, for VR and AR, but as well for VR and AR. For example, um, volumetric capture or light field camera systems. Um, in, the, in the volumetric capture field, we are working very close together with the front of our Heinrich Herz Institute, for example, here. But um, as well as other front of institutes in other fields, um, um, then we have a smart home, smart environment uh, research project that is ongoing for another, I think, one and a half year, where we try to um, establish um, different kind of technologies for barrier-free living um, for all kinds of people, um, like um, and not only in your smart home, but as well li thought a little bit broader for, um, for a whole city environments or stuff that is related to your home, but even if you leave home. Um, and last but not least, we are running a rental here. Um, renting out headsets, cameras as well, but headsets as well. And saying that, um, in that field, we have been partnering a lot um, during the last years with festivals and conferences. We've been attending them as filmmakers, as, as, as content makers, but as well, if it's a trade show, for example, with the content itself, like what I already mentioned, car configuration tools have been presented at trade shows that have been focusing on, 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 on the automotive industry, much more than media, for example. So um, we know very well um, what are the companies and the people's needs on conferences, trade shows, and looking more into the media industry, um, festivals as well. And I recognized far before the pandemic that there is needs for, for different solutions than we know. And with the pandemic, I think we all recognize and we are recognizing it exactly in this moment. We need digital tools for communication and uh, meeting. And um, so I want to show you one product, let's call it a product that we are offering since more than a year, but since a year it is used very much by festivals and conferences. Um, before I dive into that, I give you a short and I hope these tabs did not all close down as well. So I start with a small company presentation. Let's see if that works. This one. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, uh, NBR Space is a company I'm I'm running here. This is a little bit of information for me. I hope um, it looks better on your screens than on mine because on mine the the the, the monitoring is um, it's not loading the whole document. Do you see the whole pages? I think nobody can hear me like that. No, it's okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. I uh, hear it's loading loading very slowly. So here it's a variety of, of projects just to showcase a little bit um, more in detail um, what I just said. We are working on documentaries, for example, interactive documentaries, a lot on the African continent uh, during the last years, but as well commercial projects like the one in the middle, like um, the Deutsche Bank one, um, which was introducing their um, online banking, their, their mobile app for, for, for banking. Um, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice is a project um, that came out of a research project, I would say about four years ago, on volumetric capture. As you can see, the image comes from out of a capture studio we are running here in Berlin, um, not to um, 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 mention it's not the, the Babelsberg based one, it's ours here in Berlin, um, where we do volumetric capture for all kinds of devices. <coughs> Uh, then we have um, the platform projects. Uh, I will show you a little bit of video out of that as well. Um, the BFI one was just in the uh, end of last year. It won an award because it's the only European platform that is cross-platform working. It doesn't only work in VR or AR. It can be used on a Windows or on a Mac computer as well because we recognized as well before the pandemic, but even during the pandemic, that not everybody has a VR headset at home. So we need to be barrier-free here as well. And uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the RAM last year. Um, that's the only festival in Germany so far that considered using a virtual platform and not Zoom calls or these kind of 2D Web 2.0 platforms. Um, so here we used a very um, 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 strong backend from Canada during last year. Um, but in this year, and as the presentation just was literally this morning, I can, I can publicly say in um, shortly more than one week, um, the virtual doors for the RAM virtual venue will open again, completely designed and um, with a complete backend from, from our side. 
Um, research project, as I said, we have the UBIAC project for um, uh, AR devices and gesture control in smart home environments. We have a um, research project in AI support for volumetric capture um, and uh, animating actors uh, in the end. And Primask is a um, project we just finished on our end on light field camera capture technologies. <clears throat> Um, yeah, run a little bit faster through like yeah, cinema installations that what we did a lot in with, with artists or with galleries, but as well with, with festivals. So as you can see, um, uh, we can scale up for hundreds of people, but we can make it very intimate or very um, 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 very much connected to the artworks of the gallery as well. <clears throat> um, you will see a bunch of generations of different headsets. Some of them are of already outdated, of course, as the industry is moving with a very with this fast pace here. Um, Berlinale has been one of the um, um, clients for us for many years until last year when it doesn't take place anymore. The Dogfest in Munich as well. <coughs> Different other venues, virtual worlds in Munich. <coughs> and uh, last year we could establish the uh, Venice Biennale 2020 satellite. So as Venice could not happen, um, or the Biennale in Venice could not happen as regularly on the island, they ask different institutions all over the world to make installations in the city where the people don't have to travel. So that's what we did, for example, at the um, Tempelhof Airport, um, as there was enough space. Um, and last but not least, um, we are doing a lot of um, content distribution under the umbrella of the Virtual Content Group, where we collect content from, from creators and um, license it to platforms like, for example, Oculus, that is run by Oculus TV, that is run by Facebook, for example. Um, so this is us in a nutshell, and um, to bring a little bit more pace in here again and get the minutes back that I lost in the beginning, I'm um, switching directly to um, um, this year the BFI London. I pause it again. The BFI London um, that was um, the one I'd already mentioned where we won the, the Halo Award in Amsterdam last year. Um, that is a hybrid event that um, had an on-location installation with VR headsets, but as well needed to um, to offer a digital, a virtual solution. And so we um, integrated all the VR experiences and all the 3D assets that have been there um, to create um, rooms that are related to the experiences again. And the aspect beside being a European platform and um, taking care about data security, um, one of the things that are not so common in other platforms, let's say, is, is that we can integrate all the VR um, experiences into our platform. So you don't have a user flow. Users don't have to open up a new experience or go back to the menu. They start the experience directly from our platform. And if they finish it, they jump back into our platform and stand exactly where they started the, the experience. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing um, that um, artists at least appreciate a lot is that we take care about uh, security of the content itself. So we encrypt it in there so nobody can copy the video files or the experience out of the platform in the end, <clears throat> which is as well uh, not very common. So take a look at this one. London Film Festival welcomes LFF Expanded, a free new program of virtual reality, augmented reality and immersive art. For the festival this year, we created a virtual museum called The Expanse. Inside, you'll find an exhibition space and an auditorium for talks and events. You can even socialize with other attendees. In the exhibition, there are two types of experiences. Interactive works allow you to move through the creative world and make choices that affect the story. A 360 film places you in the middle of an artwork and invites you to explore the work from every angle. To explore the expanse, socialize and watch different artworks, you need a tethered headset or an Oculus Quest. You can also watch 360 films with non-tethered headsets, such as Oculus Go, or via a mobile VR headset, such as Google Cardboard. Or you can experience the works and explore the expanse in a web browser via your desktop, tablet or mobile. There's also a number of slots available to come and experience it all at BFI Southbank step into a new dimension of storytelling with LFF Expanded, available for free across the world from the 7th to the 18th of October, 2020. Right, so much about this one. And um, I think my time is more or less over, but I want to show you one other one because it's much more about a conference and about conferencing than about content itself. 
Um, so this is a one minute clip from Dajo. Right, so this is it. And um, as we um, uh, are feeling that things are loosening up again a little bit, um, we uh, get the feeling as well, and that's part of the con conclusion, that um, there's still interest in having this platform, regardless of a pandemic, end of this year in, in festivals and conferences, as um, most of the conferences recognize that um, people feel very comfortable with staying at home and not flying in and out for one day, having a jet lag on top and um, um, and, and mining about the carbon footprints. So we see this platform as something that could be further developed during the next month and years and help for um, festivals, conferences, but collaborations in general. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's an interesting, interesting uh, uh, presentation. presentation. It shows how virtual reality is diverse and how many different solutions we even had today during our webinar. I wanted to ask you, how do you think? Do you think that there's a future of fest film festival then, that we have hybrid form, that some participants will sit at home? Do you think we should all already get our Google glasses or <laughs> glasses for better perception of the films and some people will be present in the festival itself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, there was a movement was there before already that there was online um, events, that there was uh, screenings online already because people recognized. I mean, as I already mentioned, the carbon footprint is something to consider. We can not forget about that. We should not have forgotten about that before the pandemic, but the pandemic pandemic helped us to, to, to look into these tools that we forgot before. And I hope people will remember that. And um, as said, as the movement was there before already for different reasons, as well that cinema um, uh, rooms are, are limited and uh, the size of them is limited so not everybody could attend a screening when they wanted to. Um, um, online solutions have been there before and I think um, they, will, they, they, are, they have to stay definitely, for several reasons. Do you think the last year really speeded up, no? Well, yeah, it, it speeded up in a way, um, but again, I can see very much that there's a difference in territories and uh, what I can really consider, and that was a remark I, 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 I made in the, in, in the beginning of my text, um, in Germany, we are pretty, 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 pretty slow. Much too slow for that. I mean, um, I, I don't see a lot of festivals offering these kind of solutions. Mm -hmm. If so, it's a 2D thing. It's like a video in a, perhaps even in a YouTube stream. Um, but there is no in, uh, innovative solution. There's nothing that's appealing for. And um, there, there are different solutions out there. The Museum of Other Realities, for example. There's the art check that is used from Venice Biennale and Cannes. So there's different other solutions from other countries, from other other um, other companies, um, but they are used from all festivals outside of Germany. And um, uh, I didn't see too many here in Germany that even dived, in, um, dived into this field. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's hope maybe next Berlinale will try oh, to yeah. adapt at least some of the solution. I can imagine you are working on it <laughs> intensively. There's one question from the public as well. Uh, what are the three biggest challenges of virtual reality in modern world? It's well, maybe. you already mentioned the question with the glass, and I would say uh, perhaps it is a challenge, but on the other hand, I mean, I wouldn't say everybody needs to have a VR headset. Some people don't appreciate it, so they can watch the stuff on, like, our platform, for example, is open for other devices as well. But of course, that's the biggest challenge, that it's all new devices. People are aware that it's very early stage, and so um, they have been hesitant with buying the, the devices in the last years. Now they are coming more to an like the Oculus Quest, just to name one product, or the, the Pico headsets, for example, to name another brand as well. Um, they, are, they got much more uh, like affordable, um, and uh, at the same time, the quality went better. So that's, it's getting better. We are getting there, but we are still not there. And that's definitely a challenge. 
Uh, another challenge is bandwidth. Um, and again, it's in different countries, there's different, mm. different um, um, situations. But here in Berlin, I see uh, definitely a bandwidth problem as well. And that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Even Thank for Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I know what you are talking about. <laughs> But let's hope, let's hope for, for a better connection. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your presentation. I will invite you for the networking session as well. Thank you for all the presenters for showing us the, this big and wide scope of the solutions, how virtual reality is used. Mm -hmm. uh, just to remind the technicality. So now I will uh, shift us to the networking session where we will see virtual tables. For those who have not used this before, you can choose the tables you are sitting with by double click of the mouse. Uh, there are prepared three tables for each of our speaker where they, you can ask uh, more uh, detailed question or just get connected uh, as, uh, or yeah, connect with the speakers. And uh, yeah, I hope you can enjoy the networking session. Please use it for getting to know each other and ask questions you have no chance to ask. Thank you very much. And we move now to the, and you will have to turn on camera and microphone in this networking session as well. Thank you.